The member for Werriwa. Thanks, Deputy Speaker. I start by acknowledging the traditional owners of our country. I acknowledge the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people whose land on which the parliament meets. And I acknowledge the Tharawal, Gandangara and Darug people, the traditional owners in the electorate of Werriwa. Acknowledging First Australians and recognising them as the true owners of the land is a small but powerful message. Recognition is the first step to reconciliation, as is truth-telling, and I add my voice to acknowledge elders past, present and emerging. But there is much more that needs to be done, and Labor will always be committed to bringing justice to all Indigenous communities. It was a Labor government that made the national apology to the stolen generation on behalf of all Australians. It was a Labor government that acknowledges an apology is tremendously essential. However, it doesn't close the gap. There needs to be structural, institutional and cultural change in Australia for First Nations people to have the same opportunities as all Australians. Last Friday I attended the Memories in the Mall event in Liverpool that marks the importance of the apology for our community. It is the importance to remember and to recommit to make a difference. Liverpool Council and our community have a respectful relationship with its Aboriginal residents. Recently there was a deed of agreement between Gandangara Aboriginal Land Council and Liverpool Council for the upgrade of Apex and Phillips Park. The agreement will ensure that the Aboriginal community will have their history and culture recognised, there will be employment opportunities, traineeships, apprenticeships and an Indigenous garden. Tangible opportunities for change. Also, as part of the celebrations for the 200th anniversary of Campbelltown City, the Council has built, with the input of their First People, a Campbelltown Yarning Circle. Opened earlier this year by the Mayor of Campbelltown, the Yarning Circle is a show of commitment to supporting and respecting the original inhabitants of, the, of Campbelltown, the Durrawal. I would like to make special mention of Uncle Ivan Wellington, who was pivotal in seeing this project come to fruition and spoke at the unveiling. Uncle Ivan spoke on the great benefits of the site that will bring not only to the local Indigenous community but the wider community as a home. Our local community is showing that it can work to improve the situation for Aboriginal residents, but more needs to be done. It's my great privilege to be part of the House Indigenous Committee. This committee recently handed down its report into food security in remote communities. Food security in these areas has a disproportional effect on Aboriginal Australians. But the evidence that was most distressing was the lack of reliable food chains and supplies came from an Aboriginal elder in a remote community who told us that she fully expects her children will be hungry for at least three months a year because of the lack of deliveries during the wet season. And this just wasn't the result of the pandemic. It happened every year. This is heartbreaking and, in 2021, unacceptable and intolerable in a country like ours. The Closing the Gap report recommendations have highlighted for more than a decade what needs to be achieved to improve the, um, the lives of First Nations people. It is disappointing that many of the recommendations have not been implemented and targets are still not on track. Child mortality rates in Indigenous communities have stand, stagnated for the last decade, sitting well above targets set. 117 Indigenous children tragically died in 2018, more than double that of the rate for non-Indigenous children. And sadly, while the rate of non-Indigenous child mortality is improving at a faster rate, it means that the gap is widening for Aboriginal children. But as the member for Barton said, these are people, not statistics. Not more needs to be done to understand the health and the social detriments of Indigenous mothers and children if birth outcomes and deaths are to improve. First Nations are, people are dying too soon. They are incarcerated too often, suffer from more preventable diseases, are educated less and are less likely to be employed. The statistics from the report do not do the real justice for the situation that our First Nations peoples face every day. And it, this is a tragedy not of their own. We must act and we must end the shameful history and use the figures that we have to change the lives for emerging generations. And we must do it now.